hello guys welcome back to a brand new video that has been highly requested for in this channel so we're going to look into how we can implement mpesa online payments using node.js so in this project you're going to use a node.js that is an express backend for our api and we're going to be utilizing react.js for our front end our main focus will actually be on the back end so we really look forward into making this tutorial one of the best and most clear we shall be touching on parts that have been a problem with the daraja api so if you're yet to subscribe kindly do so you can also check out my channel that is uh, the vries i will leave the link on the description i really have cool tutorials that are waiting for you so with that said let's get into it so before getting started let's check out a very quick demo of what we shall actually be building so let me just open up the the live application actually it's hosted on heroku so i'll also leave the link on the description so that you guys can also check it out and also donate something for us obviously so it's simply a react application with a form that initiates the mpesa sdk push and uh, a table that lists all the transactions that are saved to the database after successfully payment by the client so i will do a very quick demo on that i just input my phone number the it is uh, and uh, also input the amount let me just have uh, pay to bob so the, this form is also validated so if i enter something like nine digits and i click pay here it will tell me that i should enter a valid form number so the validation there is also very fit and as you can see also the pay button updates with the whatever input that we put on the amount so that is also cool all thanks to react.js that is so let me just initiate this one very quickly yeah so as you can see we have uh, the sdk push query working there's a push that has been sent to my phone and uh, when i cancel out this one let's see when i cancel out this one it will just uh, notify me that the user has cancelled the transaction so it's kind of uh, taking live feedback and it's very very good for for ui purposes so let me just now make a very co a complete payment and uh, see what actually happens when i pay so waiting for the sdk push the sdk push has just arrived in my phone entering the the exact uh, pin that is supposed to be entered and uh, i've sent that one less so successfully paid will be in touch with you shortly and when i refresh this one when i refresh the form find that the payment has been listed here real time with the exact details we have the date that is here the amount i have the phone number that i've personally masked it it's not coming from safaricom this way for security purposes and uh, we also have the transaction id that is the real one that i've received from the mpesa message so as you can see the app is really cool and we shall be building this one from scratch but the main focus will actually be on the back end how we can implement the mpesa tutorial so just stay in have a pen and paper and uh, let's do this so first of all guys we're going to go through briefly everything that we are going to need so as i said earlier i want to make this one of the best tutorials so i don't want to leave any details behind so i'm going to explain to you exactly what we are going to need for we to make this uh, this uh, tutorial actually a successful one so i already think that uh, you guys already have these things but if you don't have them if you are an absolute beginner to the daraja api you don't worry about that just hit me up on the comment section and uh, we shall find a way on which we shall guide you through getting all these credentials so step one so that is number one we need a developers account developers account that is on daraja so you are going to get this one on daraja i think uh, it is supposed to be developer developer.safaricom yeah let's say the co.ke is but you can google that one and get the exact thing so from this portal we are actually going to get some some credentials there so we have the consumer key that we're going to need there we also have uh, the secret key that we also going to need from there and you also have the pass key that you're going to need from there so if you are you're doing a test application the pass key will be provided for you but uh, if you have a live pay bill you find that the pass key will be sent to you to your email when you when you go live so worry not about this one so if you have a live pay bill that is okay with us 
and if you also doing this one on sandbox the pass key will actually be availed to you so those are the things that we shall actually be needing so if you have them set then uh, we are good to go if you have don't have them you can also just uh, check out some tutorials from this channel they are actually explaining on how you can get all the de these details from the daraja portal but you can also just uh, follow along and get the, the the logic of how we implement this one so that by the time you acquire these credentials you already set and you have that logic of how you're going to go about uh, implementing the payment on your website or your application so now with all that set let's actually get into the code so let me just open my my, my command line so if you are using the command line well and good you can follow along but uh, if you're not used to using the command line you can just create an uh, you can just create a, a folder so I mean uh, I'm in the folder where I want to create my my application so remember we are working with node.js so you're going to create just a uh, just a normal folder so that is a uh, macd I'm going to call it uh, node mpesa node high underscore mpesa tutorial so that is cute is nice let me just hit enter so that one is created so let me just cd into the node mpesa tutorial so that is it so in this folder remember we are working with express.js so what i'm going to need here i'm going to have to install some some packages but before that let me just initialize this one as an uh, npm project so let me just run npm in it so i think that one will initialize this one as a so I'm just going to run it with the flag Y so that I skip all those questions. So I'm just okay with the default setup. So there we go. We already have uh, the, the tutorial initialized as a, as a NPM. So we have the package.json created for us. So now we are going to install some uh, some things that you're going to need some packages and dependencies that you're going to need so the first thing that uh, we are going to need so that is npm install you can just run npm install or you can do the shorthand of it npm i so the first thing is express so that is what we're going to need we're also going to need uh, cause we are also going to need uh, nodemon actually so nodemon will be used to actually watch watch our application we don't have to restart the server each and every time so if you have this one already installed on your machine globally there's no problem but i'm going to install it directly from this application so that uh, somebody who has not used it to be actually clear on everything so after nodemon i'm also going to need the uh, env so for now i'm not going to work with the database but uh, when it comes that time i'll have to install uh, mongoose for the database so with these ones uh, i think uh, they should be set. .env will be used to hide actually our environment variables. Nodemon will be watching and cause because we're going to be creating a, a different React application to send requests to this our application here. So it should accept cross origin platform cross origin and calls. That is so that is what cause will be dealing with. So let me just hit enter and have these ones installed. Let's meet after they are done. So there we go guys, all our packages have been installed, so I'm going to open this folder on VS Code, so I'm just going to run code space dot to open this one on Visual Studio Code. So our application is opened up already on VS Code, so I'm going to do a very quick setup on this one, so I'm just uh, not going to go through everything that I'll I'm going to be doing so as I mentioned our focus is on M-Pesa, so we see that on the package.json we have our our dependency is actually installed here so the main should be index.js so I'm going to create that one really quickly so that is uh, index.js oh, so that is it so the first thing I'm going to require express so let me just uh, make this one at least wide so that you guys can can see whatever I'm doing here uh -huh. so I think this one should be okay think this should be should be fine so the first thing I'm going to install that is a const so now we have a, a basic express application or an express server setup here 
So I'm just going to go through everything that I've already done here. So I've just required express as a, then I've also initialized express. I'm requiring .env. Remember, I have an environment variable here .env file. So I'm requiring it here so that I'll be storing my my secret secret things that are there, the secret keys that I'm going to be saving there for security purposes. So here I'm uh, listening to the app that is the Express app. So on port, that is uh, the port is supposed to be the port that is in the environment variable. So let me just try that const, uh, const port. It's supposed to be process.env.port. Nice. And I save this one. So when I come to port here, we have the port that is 8000 that is here. So it will be taking in. The, the port from the environment variable then putting it here and uh, starting the server the, th the server is started successfully then it's going to to console the log that uh, app is running on localhost this one so on my package with this one I've just added some scripts here remember I'm using nodemon so I'm going to run on the development uh, variable with the on the development server with the nodemon then uh, when it's deployed, actually, it will be running the npm start, so it will run node, node index.js. So I think everything is set. Is set. So let me just uh, open up my integrated terminal. It's already opened up here. So let me run npm npm run dev. So this should open up my if everything is actually set. So let's see node mon index.js starting the local server. Uh, so it's it's set. So you can see this console that is that was here. It's actually being consoled here. That app is running on port 8000. So let me just create a very simple get route to attest whether the, the application is really running. So let me just write uh, app dot uh, dot get. Then uh, just directly the slash. So it will just take a function here request. Then taking a response also. Then uh, I'll just simply read that send a h1 h1 so, so the h1 will say hello from the Rizwan. So let me just save this one, and as you can see, the moment I save it restarts. Uh -huh app is running so let me just see if it's really running on this other side so oh, localhost oh. localhost that is port 8000 yeah so you can see here hello from this one so it 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 it, it works well so if I change this text to hello world, hello, let me just remove this one here and uh, put the freeze. That's actually my YouTube channel. Actually, you can go and check it out. Don't fail to do that, please. Just let's show support. Uh, when I refresh this one, have I really saved? Hello from the freeze. Let me just save this one. The changes have been picked up. When I refresh this one, yeah, hello from so we are done setting up the express server now let's go into writing the routes in which that you shall be using doing so as i said earlier i want to make this tutorial actually the most understandable tutorial ever so i won't be writing this code uh, systematically the way it is supposed to be written but uh, i will be writing each line of code depending on the necessity for it to be written so right now what what is in your mind is that we need to to, to send an API call actually we're going to write a route that will enable us to send an SDK push to Safaricom so let me just try that route so it's a uh, slash and it will be taking in the request and uh, response so we with the request we shall be expecting the phone number of the user so const phone should be equal to the request dot body dot phone mm. 
then uh, then we also expect uh, the amount so still the same the request that body that amount so by this one we should be done with here so after hitting this request let us just console or uh, rest dot json we're going to bring out uh, the amount the phone and amount so nice so let's test this out on postman so we have this so let me just make this one a post request so here we are going to have a phone number so for example 07 uh, 68 that's my number actually then uh, the amount uh, let's say for example 10 bob so let me send this one mm -hmm. so we're having an error I cannot post slash oh sorry so it's supposed to be slash stk uh, let's hit this one again so we're getting the amount here so it's supposed to put 07 here so this one's supposed to be 07 that's the problem of live coding actually so don't worry about that so yeah so this is the phone number 07 that we're having here and uh, this is the amount that is here so let us now send the the request to safaricom with these things so that they initiate the stk push for us so we'll quickly head over to the documentation of uh, safaricom and uh, so we have the lipa and pesa online this is what we are doing so they're saying that uh, we have the the url that is here actually the url is here then uh, huh, so we expect the response back whatever is being supposed to be sent the request body this is the body that is supposed to be sent here and uh, we are going to copy everything from here then we see what we have and what we actually don't have so that we can now go into that so now this is what is happening so this is our endpoint so that is localhost 8000 slash sdk of which we are receiving the phone number and the amount from the user then we are making a post request to safaricom actually so this the post request this is the url that we are going to make the request from so when you go to the portal actually when i head over to the portal here you'll find that uh, they have provided the the url this is the url so we have the difference here we have sandbox but uh, mine is api so you're going to use the uh, dot sandbox when you when you are using the test api so you're going to write here sandbox but because i'm on production and anybody else will be on production the, the api will be the link will be actually slash api then we need the short code the business short code is the pay bill and uh, if you're using a till number this one becomes the the store number it becomes the store number not the till number actually the store number so I will only I will just put it up here. So my business short code is in the dot env variable. So process dot env dot mpesa pay bill. I think I've called it that way. Mpesa pay bill. So let me just confirm this. Yeah, we have the mpesa pay bill, the consumer key, pass key, and secret key. All of them at this side. So I'm not going to open that file again. I've already confirmed that one. So let me just copy this part that is here. Uh -huh. so we have the pass password so password is simply a base 64 encoding of uh, base 64 encoding of actually the short code this is business short code still plus the pass key that is here we have the pass key and you also have the the timestamp timestamp that we are about to generate here let me just write the the code actually to generate the timestamp you can use any kind of you cannot use you you can use moment you can use whatever you know how to use it but i normally have a, i normally have kind of a, a fixed code for generating my my timestamps so i'm just going to copy paste that one then we shall continue from there so i have just generated my my timestamp here so this is the fzfd in a con constant called uh, timestamp so i'm just going to replace it here so timestamp mm -hmm. timestamp equals to timestamp nice so the password i've said it's a base 64 encoding of the short code so let me just write those ones const short code should be equal to it's still the process dot env dot uh, mpesa payable nice 
then it's also going to need the pass key so const pass key this one should be equal to process dot env dot uh, mpesa mpesa pass key nice so the time time is that one so let me just generate the password so const const password should be equal to so we are going to base 64 encode the concatenation between uh, the shortcode the pass key and the timestamp so this is how we are going to be doing it so let's just write new uh -huh, new buffer what is wrong with this new buffer dot from so this is the function that you're going to use and what we need here is the short code short code that is here short code we are going to also add it up with the uh, so short code plus pass key then plus timestamp timestamp nice so that is it then you're going to write another function to string I'm making it into base 64 so the string that you're going to use here actually is uh, base 64 so that is let's classify this one as base 64 so that is how we actually generate our password that is how we generate our password. Let me just paste a pay bill. Uh -huh. So let's copy this one. Paste it here. And then there's no need of us repeating ourselves here, down here. Then we also paste that one there. And we save. And uh, we are set. So we already have this one. So let me just put the password here instead of all this long string. So password is equal to password save this one let me just put a comma here save this one and we're done so you already have the short code we have the password we have the timestamp so the transaction type will will depend we have two transaction types we have customer pay bill online if you're using a pay bill but if you're using a till it becomes customer buy goods online so this is how it will become if it's for a till so it becomes a customer buy actually buy goods online so you're going to replace this one buy goods online with this one pay bill online so the amount is the amount remember we have our amount that we are taking it from from amount here so you're going to write here the amount that we are receiving from the user amount that is nice yeah so then party a is the amount that we need here but remember our amount that is coming in comes in as 07 so what we're going to do with this uh, the, the phone number actually not the amount the amount the phone number is coming with 07 so let's just uh, remove the zero so sub string sub string uh, one so we just remove the zero from that so it becomes now if you you put 0720 so it becomes 720 so that here we can just add up this uh, 254 so that is the 254 plus we are going to concatenate this one with uh, the the amount that is coming with just seven so to do that we're going to use dollar sign then uh, we're going to put brackets here so inside here we're going to put that phone that we are receiving there so let me just remove the double quotes and i'm going to use the backlashes like that so nice so that is how we get the 2547 instead of just requesting the user to enter 254 just let them do with the 07 then uh, remove the zero then add 254 to it before you send the request to safaricom but b is still our short code but b is still our short code so let's just re return here short code nice then uh, huh. Party A is still the phone number, so let me just copy this one, copy and uh, paste it here, nice. So the callback URL is uh, the domain plus the, the function that will be receiving the callback later, so we shall get into this one. The account reference, there is no problem with that and the transaction description, 
also there's no problem with that let me just put this one to this one page uh, this one paid and this one here it's supposed to be hmm. let me just return it to test but this one is good to have the transaction reference as the phone number because you might need it in the future so let me just copy this one so this is the account number when you're you're, you're, you're paying manually using your your SDK that is your sim toolkit you're going to enter the reference the account reference and the account account number now that is the body that X safaricom is expecting and we we can see we have everything we have the short code we have the password that we have base 64 encoded uh, the short code the pass key and the timestamp then here we also have the timestamp that is here then we have uh, the transaction type that is customer pay bill online because i'll be using a pay bill we have the amount that is coming from the user we have the phone number that uh, we have done something to read to become the standard one that safaricom expects then uh, party b yeah party b should be the phone number so i don't know why could not find short code did you mean short code oops sorry so this is short code this is short code and this is supposed to be short code i misspelled this ones oh nice so everything is now okay so party a is the the user party a is the user as it was let me move this one party a is the user let's place it here and party b is the short code that is receiving there yeah so there you go so the callback i've explained this one the account reference doesn't matter for now but the phone number will do that is the body now the headers that safaricom is expecting we have authorization so very be very careful with this actually so we have the authorization that safaricom expects a token a token that we shall have to generate every time that we send a request to safaricom so we don't have it here for now that is why i say that we shall be doing everything depending on the necessity when we need it so we now need the token so we now have to generate the token and remember i've said that the token is supposed to be generated every time before we hit the function before we send the request to safaricom we have to get the token so for doing that for us to do that we are going to utilize the middlewares we're going to utilize middlewares so middleware function function to generate generate token then so me write this one so actually let me just const uh, generate token this one should be equal to this is a function let me just use arrow functions nice right, so that is what we are going to do now remember this is a middleware so a middleware will take three parameters so you're going to take the request response and the next object so next object will be called when when this when there's no error actually so it will go to the next one so let me just now console dot log the body that is not that necessary so with here i'm going to pass this one before we hit this other function i'm going to pass the generate token here generate token as a middleware so this is the flow of the of everything so when you hit s slash stk it's going to run this function first so the function that we're going to write here is going to generate a token so we can access the token in this other function that we are going to call next so in case the token is not generated then the function will stop from here and will not execute the code that sends the request to safaricom i think that part is is clear and i've made it very very clear so there is where we have now the token so each time we send the request to safaricom the token is generated in case there's any error we are not going to reach to this point but in case everything is just okay and the token is generated then you're going to send it as the authorization bearer in our headers so i think we are done with that so after that let me just uh, finish up this one dot then if we get any response or any data from safaricom what i will do with this one i will just uh, console dot log the data the data that is here 
and I will also raise dot status of the 200 that is okay dot json I'm going to send back the data to the client nice so let also let us also catch some errors so dot catch in case there is any error here let us also do the same so let's console dot log dot log the error dot message and we shall also raise dot status of 400 that is a bad request dot uh, json we are going to send back the error dot message so we are pretty much through with that one so what we are remaining with actually is to write now the middleware function that generates our token so let us now write the function to generate the token actually this function is is one of the simplest function because we're just making a get request to safaricom and they just give us the token as simple as it is so we are going to to do that one very quickly so i'm going to use axios so synchronize so let me just make this one a sync function so here i'm going to await an axios dot dot get it's just a get request so we are going to get from a certain url then uh, we are going to send uh, there is no body here so we're just going to send back the the header so here we have the headers that are needed by safaricom so the headers here we are going to need uh, something called authorization authorization of which the authorization is supposed to be something called uh, basic basic this is supposed to be capital basic then uh, plus something so basic plus space so basic plus then we have uh, space nothing here just an empty space then uh, we have something called uh, an out so we have authorization here so for this one i'm going to show you how we're going to get the out so let's just uh, use back ticks so this is basic basic then uh, dollar sign so we need an out an out variable so this out this authentication we get it when we base 64 encode just like we did with the password but here we are base 64 encoding the key secret key and the consumer key so let's just get those ones from the environment variables so const const secret so there is a secret key so it's supposed to be process dot env there is process dot env dot mpesa mpesa secret key i think i saved it that way mpesa secret key nice then you also have consumer key so that is const consumer key is supposed to be process dot env dot mpesa consumer underscore key so that is it actually so the url let me just head over to daraja and see what the documentation are saying so this is the url the endpoint that you're supposed to be sending let me just copy this one the way it is control copy mm-hmm control paste it here so it is sandbox for sandbox apps that for me i'm using live so let me just change this one to api so we need the out we are still not having it so const out const out is supposed to be is equal so we are going to base 64 and code the secret key and the consumer key in a certain format so let me just copy whatever i did with the password here whatever i did with the password there and uh, const out i'm going to do the same here oops what is happening i'm going to do the same here let me just copy it again seems like something went wrong control copy this one mm -hmm. Where the problem coming from so yeah let me just paste this one here so instead of doing short code customer key secret key i'm going to put 
something else here let me just confirm from the daraja api so what they need here is uh, are you seeing how it is so this is how it is consumer key then uh, colon then consumer secret consumer key colon consumer secret so let me just put this one so it is consumer key so dollar sign i saved it as a consumer key consumer key then uh, colon this way then consumer secret dollar sign consumer secret so i saved it as secret nice so that is how you we do it so we already have our out that is here and here and that is pretty much we finished about that one so let's just finish it this one so dot then because it was asynchronous so dot then so we have data that is coming in here let us simply console.log this data uh -huh. console.log data yeah. then also res.status this is supposed to be 200 let's not return this the response because remember we uh, the, remember these are just a middleware function so it will bring some errors we need to just go further so the moment it's successful let's just call the next so remember that next so when you call the next it goes to the next function so it will run this one when it is successful here gives us the data console.logs it and goes to the next function hits this one remember if it is successful the data should give us a token so data dot token like this the data should give us a token and when it gives us that token we are going to now put it here so we're going to call the api to initiate the sdk push and the token will be available for us so let us just catch any errors in case they are any so dot catch but I don't believe that we are going to fall into errors not unless we have invalid credentials. So error. Mm -hmm. So we're going to console.log error also here. Console.log error. And remember when we get an error, nothing happens. So let us just rest dot status of 400 dot json. We're going to return the error dot message. So if you're not here, I've returned the, the response to the user in the catch when there is an error. Because this is a middleware, when there is an error, it will not proceed. Not unless I call the, f the next function also here. And it, no, it will make no sense, actually, calling a next function in an, in an error. So there is no need of writing that function, actually. But when there is a token, when we have the data, when the call is successful, then you're going to call the next when we return something with the response here remember the call will just end from there and whatever the response that we are getting here after in the in the second function we shall not get it in our client so that is the problem that is why we are not sending it on the successful token generation so that is all what is remaining is now testing it so we're going to test it very with using postman and uh, probably if everything is right then we are set and good to go so let me open postman so i'll be using postman to test out my my apis so now before before i actually test out uh, the sdk push let me just uh, try out whether this middleware function is really working let's see if we are going to get this this data and from this data is where we're going to generate our token so let me just quickly write a, a route that will help me generate that one before even so that is up dot get let me just call this one slash uh, token so it's going to take in a request and a response nice so inside here i'm going to call this function so generate generate token let me just call it here so the moment I hit this route here, slash token, then this function is going to run. And uh, in my console, I'll be expecting the data from here. Then I will see what kind of data I'm receiving and uh, where am I going to get my, my token from. So without wasting time, let me just head over to Postman again. So I've called that one slash token and uh, it's a get request. Oops, cannot get any response. What is happening? 
wa <laughs> upper scratched. Axis is not defined. Have I not actually? Let me just see if I installed Axios. Oh shit. So let us just quickly install Axios. Let us install Axios. Then uh, once Axios is installed, then you're going to run that one again. So npm install Axios. As you wait that to be installed, let me just uh, require it here. Just on top somewhere here. After this one, so const axios should be equal to require axios. Let me just save this. So now that Axios is already installed, let us now try this one again. Hopefully we are not going to run into any error. So we are going to hit a slash token that is a get request and it will run this function. So the function simply sends a, a get request to this, this URL here and it's supposed to give us back the data of which hopefully this data is going to contain the access token. So let's just try this one. So we shall check our console whether we have received whatever we are supposed to receive. So localhost 8000 slash token. Mm -hmm. Loading. I'm not sent back the request. So let us see. Nice. We are getting here. Don't mind about uh, next is not a function because we, are, we were just testing that one. So as you can see here on the console, I'm having data. Then it's having access token. So here what we need is a... Uh, console.log data dot data dot access access token okay, let me just copy this one so that I don't have any spelling issues so just copy this dot this one here so to remove this data dot data let me, let me just call this one something else Re response let me just call it the response that I'm receiving so here I'm just going to say response, response, you can call that on whatever you want. So response dot res response dot data dot access token. So let me just save this and uh, rerun the function again. So let's run it again and see what we are now receiving. So send this one, come back here. So here is the token that we are receiving. Here's the token that we are receiving, and uh, after that, let's just say now const token should be equal to response dot. So whatever we are receiving here, just let, let us just put this one here. Control copy this, and control this one here. So let's just comment out this one because we avoid a lot of consoling we got already whatever we want so i think this function is all done so we are getting the token here let me just comment out this route also it has no use anymore so the function runs and it's, it, it generates a token successfully and saves the token into a token variable remember the function will run as a middleware before this one here so when it runs it generates the token so we have the variable token saved in that then here on the authentication, where we have uh, the bearer, then the token is put here. So now if we run the SDK push, if we now run the SDK push, everything should work perfectly. So the SDK push, let's now try that one. And if that one works, then we shall be done with the SDK push. And so, huh. so this one was slash SDK. Then uh, it was a post request. The body was taking in the phone number and amount. So let me just uh, take in the phone number 07 68 79 39 23. So I'm expecting a push on my phone. And uh, when the SDK push is successful, then I'm going to get a successful message here. So let me just pull up this one so that I see whatever response that I'll be getting. So let's send out this will not get any response what is the issue with this one again uh, 
Mpesa pay bill, Mpesa pass key. We have all those. What is happening? So let's see the error. Let's see the error. The error says token is undefined. Line 86. Reference error. Line 86. Line 86. Where is line 86? <laughs> or oh, line 89. Line 89, yeah. Token that is here. But this one. So generate token runs. Before that. So generate token here it is, it runs before that. And uh, const token is equal to that one here. Response. That should not be an issue with a less or that should not be a, a big issue actually. So token should be that one. So slash access token. So So let me just do this. Uh -huh. So when I come here, let's see whether we are getting this. Yeah, here it is. So now it should work. It should now work. So let's try this one again. Slash SDK. Converting circular. So it's successful. I'm having my SDK push on my phone. So let me just cancel out this one first for now and deal with this issue that is here. It's just telling us that the object we are receiving it, it's kind of big. So let's get the data of it actually. So where was the function? So, mm -hmm. the, the data. So let's just get the data again. The data again. Here also data dot data again. So so that we get something small. Whatever we were getting was it couldn't be converted to JSON. So let's run this one again. Nice. So this is the response that we are getting. And the SDK push has been sent to my phone. And uh, we are successful in sending the push. So the service has been accepted successfully. And uh, I have the SDK push on my phone. And when I pay for that one, that will be the end of the SDK push. So what is remaining right now is to receive the callback from Safaricom. That is one. Then also for UI purposes, we shall have to check for the user, the user action, whatever they have done, whether they have cancelled or uh, they have paid for us to perform whatever we are going to do on the UI part. But that one will come later. So for now, we shall going to... We're going to work on how to save this transaction on the database. So for that said, let's meet in the next part of this series. So if you're yet to subscribe, kindly do so. So you can also check out my, my channel, the Vries that is. The link will be on the description. Just leave a like, kindly subscribe and uh, let us show support, guys.